how do statisticians uh, calculate probability? I'll tell you. I got you. <laughs> How do statisticians calculate probability? Well, they're lucky because for them, they have insurance companies and they use statistics and probability to determine the insurance premiums. Um, and many factors come into play in this calculation. It is not simple. But luckily for them, they have computer programs that have been specifically created for the industry that they're working in. So the computer will work out the probability of certain events occurring based on this data. So they can just get the data, put it into their programs, and come up with a figure. Unfortunately, it's not that easy for us when we're sitting in the exam. We do not have that kind of technology. We need to know how to actually deal with probability. And I'm going to help you out there. So let's look at questions that you may see at school. But first, let's get our head around some of the terminology involved in probability. The mathematical term for the probability or chance of something happening is called an event. So the chance of something, something happening is called an event. The result of the event is called the outcome. And a favorable outcome is an event which we would like to occur. So chance of something happening, event, result of the event, outcome, and the favorable outcome is what we would like to occur. Okay probability scale. So probability is measured on a scale and we can measure it in three different ways. As a percentage, we all know what a percentage is, as a fraction or as a decimal. If an event cannot occur, there's no chance of it occurring, then we will say that it is impossible. If an event will always occur, we will say that it is certain. And if an event has the same chance of occurring that it does if not occurring, we'll say that there's an even chance, 50-50. So if an event has a 20% chance of occurring, it is unlikely. It's under 50%, it's probably not going to happen. It's below even. If it has a 75% chance of occurring, it is likely. It's above 50%. We have, we're looking at a good chance of whatever might happen. There are two ways of getting the probability of an event by experimenting or by theory. Now, when we determine the probability um, use an experiment, we call this relative frequency. But we're not gonna deal with relative frequency today. We're dealing with theory. So when we determine the probability of an event occurring by theory, we will call the result probability. Now, luckily we have a nice little formula that you can use. Um, and I'll just break this down for you. A is the event you want to occur. PA is a probability of that event occurring. NA is the number of favorable outcomes. S is a sample set. And NS is a total number of possible outcomes in the entire sample set. So your formula looks like this. It's PA it's equals the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes in the sample set. Okay, use that formula for anything it kind of works out. So let's use it for this. A dice is thrown, find the probability of throwing a three. A dice has six sides to it. There's only one three between the numbers one and six. So there's only one chance of getting a three in that round. Therefore, you'll have one over three. And an odd number, how many odd numbers are there in the sample set from one to six? One's an odd number, three, three is an odd number, and five. and five. So that's three over six. But remember, we always simplify. So we will simplify to one over two, which is 50% chance, it's a half. And a seven, there's no seven in the samples one to six, so you'll get a big zero for that. Okay, let's look at another example. A school decides to have a Valentine's Day dance for the learners. In the previous year, 46, out of 72 grade 10 learners attended the dance, 46 out of 72. If there are 95 grade learners, grade 10 learners this year, how many are expected to, to attend the dance if the same percentage as in the previous years attended? Mm -hmm. So we need to know what the percentage was because the, the numbers of children was different. We have more children this year, so we need to know the percentage that we dealt with last year. They said that it was 46 children out of 72 that attended. What was the percentage of that? If you work that out, you would say 46 over 72 times 100 and you get 63.88. That is the percentage of children that attended last year. So if that same percent um, attended this year, 
what, how many children would actually attend the dance. But this year they had 95 children. So we're going to use that percentage and multiply it, but the children we're dealing with this year is 95, and we get the answer of 61. In general, 12% more grade 12s attend the dance. If there are 65, 65 grade 12s, how many are expected to attend the dance? So 12% more attend usually. So we're gonna add that 12% onto the original percentage that we have worked with that we were given from the beginning. Our percentage was 63.888. We add the 12% and that gives us 75.888. The number of grade 12 learners they spoke of was 65. So we want to know this percentage times 65 learners and what number of learners do we get out of that? So 75% times 65, which is the number of learners, gives us 49.3. We can't have a third of a person, so we got a round <laughs> down. <laughs> so only 49 grade 12 learners should attend. What chances do I have of winning the lottery? Mm. Because wow. these days people, right? Wow. <laughs> you speak my ears off about China and now you ask me how to win the lottery. I don't know this stuff. No, I'm kidding. I actually do. It's actually really technical, this winning the lottery thing. And mm -hmm. your chances are like little to nothing. Mm -hmm. But people will still play the lottery. People will still give all their last three rand for mm -hmm. that lottery ticket because they think they're going to win. Mm. Today I will tell you exactly what your chances are of winning the lottery. Mm -hmm. So for the lottery you have to pick six different numbers. You can only play, you can only pick each number once. You can't pick 49 twice or three twice. Each number, you have six numbers and you've got to pick each one of those numbers once. Mm -hmm. Out of a total of 49 numbers. Okay? So the calculation for the total number of combinations is over here on my Wacom, I've got 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44 over 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And that gives us a calculation. Why do we have this funny calculation over here? So we have 49 numbers. We can only pick 6, which is why we have 6 numbers in our denominator and 6 numbers in our numerator. We have 49 numbers, we start with the 49. So we have 49 numbers, we have 49 numbers in a bag, let's just say. With 49 numbers, you have 49 different ways of playing the numbers. Hmm. When you move on to the next numbers, you have 48 different ways. You've already picked one number out of that bag of balls, you now only have 48 different ways of playing that game. 48 different numbers you can choose from. Pick another number, you now only have 47 goes on like that. You pick another number, you only have 46. Another number, you have 45 when you're left with 44. If you had 50 numbers to work with out of a total in the bag, there were 40, 50 numbers, you would do the same thing. You would say 50, then you've taken one number out, then multiply it by 49, multiply it by 48, and so forth. But we're working with 49. We divide it by the numbers that we have six numbers are the opportunities that we have. We can only choose six. So we start with six. We put one number aside. Now we only have five left. So we're gonna multiply it by five. Take another number out. Now we only have four numbers that we can pick. Take another number out and so on and so forth. So we have 49 times 48 over six times five times four times three times two times one. That gives us a round figure of 13,983,816, actually very far from round, I lie. <laughs> That's 13,983,816. Okay, what are we gonna do with that? So now, the likelihood of selecting the correct numbers for lottery. If you buy one ticket, one ticket is three rand 50. So we're gonna put one over that number that we've worked out of your possibilities of all that numbers and your 49 numbers, six chances, the, round, the number you get is 13,983,086 and 816. We're gonna put one over that and make it to make it a percentage, we're gonna multiply it by 100. So buying one ticket, you have 0.000007% chance of winning the lottery. What? So uh, <laughs> one minute, one ticket's not gonna help. 
a thousand tickets, three thousand five hundred rand. Just by the way, we'd say a thousand over that figure multiplied by one hundred, and you then have zero point zero zero seven percent chance of winning. Still not enough, Nan. Spending three thousand five hundred. <laughs> if you buy a million tickets, though, which is three million five hundred thousand. Then a million over that number multiplied by a hundred, and you have seven percent chance of winning. Seven percent. Basically, you have very little chance, and if you win, you're just lucky. So, <laughs> if you're a lucky person, just go for it.